All right, this video is gonna go over the drawing materials that we typically use for lithography. Um, so first off, you can see I have the cover on this, uh, the border's already gummed, and uh, I wanna make sure that I keep my hand off of that clean surface, that drawing surface of the, of the plate, or the stone, whatever I'm using. Um, so you can see I use a piece of newsprint here, or I'm planning to use a piece of newsprint to keep that underneath of my hand anytime I'm drawing to protect the plate. I can put it on that gum border, but I don't want to put it on that plate surface because it's grease sensitive. So I'm using uh, just pure gum Arabic here. I can use border gum uh, as a resist for my drawing. So uh, basically this is going to uh, make it so that those areas of the plate that I am painting on right now will always be white. So if you have an area of your drawing that you know uh, you don't want any grease to effect and you want it to be a pure bright white space, um, this is a really great method to stencil out those areas so that grease never hits it and it desensitizes the plate so it, it never really wants to accept grease. So I've drawn that out and then those areas will permanently be white. Uh, the litho pencils uh, come in a stick form and they're going to come in several different uh, numbers and those numbers will indicate how greasy uh, that or greasy and hard or soft the pencil is so uh, i'm using a number four here but the pencils range from number one to number five they work opposite the way that graphite would work uh, where the higher number means a darker pencil with litho pencils a higher number means a lighter harder pencil so the marks are going to be lighter and have less grease I'm showing you how to use the litho crayon holder. Uh, so there's a little button on the back that depresses it and you can see that I had to break this pencil up into a smaller bit because otherwise it's not gonna fit into the um, holder. I'm pointing out that the, the end is pretty dull after you've snapped it off. So a great way to sharpen those up is a nice um, metal pencil sharpener. Typically the ones that say made in Germany work the best and I can sharpen that point down to a really fine point to draw with. And you can see I'm saving those shavings because I actually use those as a drawing material as well. I could also use a uh, X-Acto knife, which I pointed out there to sharpen that if I preferred, but to get a really nice point, I typically use a pencil sharpener. Uh, what's nice about the pencils is I can get a really nice range of values by just slowly building up tones on a plate. So you can see right now, as I just kind of lightly press down, they work a lot like, like a graphite pencil that I wanna keep layering over and over and over to try to really make a transition smooth. Every single little mark that I make with these pencils is gonna show up. So if I draw fast and press hard, those chunky marks are gonna show up as chunky marks. Every kind of brush or pencil stroke really shows up in this so if you want something that has really smooth transitions you need to take the time to draw slowly and build up tones smoothly I tend to do kind of little circles as you're seeing here to build up um, tone really slowly and I'm barely pressing down to start and then slowly build up those tones if I want to use some of the greasier pencils I would I would use those after I've already drawn with my lighter pencils so the grease from the greasier pencils would reject grease from the lighter pencils if I if I draw the opposite way. Here I'm using a tablet. Uh, if I want kind of broader strokes, uh, things that feel maybe a little bit more expressive, these tablets are really great. They also come in other numbers. You can see I'm making really broad strokes and uh, you can get some nice marks built up this way. I could also draw with more pointed marks, but it still works the same way if I press light to start and then slowly build up tones, I get a nice kind of transition in those values. I'm using this clean brush here because you'll see with the, uh, the pencils and some of the other stuff that it leaves little chunks of greasy material on there. I wouldn't want to brush those off with my hand because I have grease on my hands that would get on the plate. I might have fingerprints within my drawing. So I want a nice clean brush that I kind of keep around always this is kind of my brush to clean off the surface of the plate. The Korns Litho pencils uh, 
It's rare that they come in this form anymore. The, the stick form that you saw earlier that I put into the pencil holder is typically what you're gonna be using, but if you happen to run across these, the way it works is you pull down the string to, to pull back some of that paper and then you just peel that off slowly. I can still sharpen those the same, the same way that I sharpen the other ones. Uh, and then can draw in the, in the same manner that I would draw with the other corns litho pencils. It's also important to note that those pencils are really uh, brittle and kind of fragile, so you want to be careful about just tossing them around or accidentally dropping them, because what will happen is they'll crack throughout the pencil and break it into little tiny bits, and it makes it really hard to sharpen them or it makes it hard for them to stay in the pencil holder. So I said I was going to use those pencil shavings. What I like to use those for is if I'm trying to do some really soft tones. So I would want to make sure my hands were clean or my fingers were clean and free of grease, but then I can put my finger in those pencil shavings and then just kind of use them as a rubbing material and slowly build up those soft tones. You can see I'm doing this also over top of that, those areas where I painted gum arabic. So remember that all those areas are going to stay white. Uh, and then I get those tones built up around those areas. I'm using my clean brush again to brush that off. So then we have touche. Uh, we have a couple different types of touche. So we have water-based touche and oil-based touche. The water-based touche we're gonna use uh, with water and the oil-based touche we're gonna use with some sort of solvent, usually lithotene or mineral spirits. The water-based touche is is really nice for creating washes that will have what we call uh, reticulation in them. So the grease is gonna suspend all along the edges of the water and kind of uh, spread out to the edges so we get uh, what almost looks like if you had hard water in your house and you see those lines from it. So uh, you can see I, I put some water down and this suspended the grease in it slowly, but I could mix up different contents or mixtures of that touche. So I had uh, anything from a dark dark to a really light gray and work in applications that way. The solvent-based touche, which I'm using here with lithotene, uh, tends to give you much darker solid results. Um, you still will get a little bit of variation if you mix up different concentrations of this, but this one I find is really nice for painting in really solid areas, or if I have a really fine point brush, I can do kind of detailed work um, and, and use that as my drawing material instead of using a pencil that maybe that point gets really uh, loose or dull really quickly. These drawing sticks work really similarly to the tablet. It's kind of a, a nice uh, medium version of the, uh, the tablet or in between the tablet and the pencil. So the next video is gonna be me drawing on a plate for